Thank you all for coming, and uh, you're in for a treat. How's everybody doing? You sounded like it. That's what I'm talking about. Usually they ask twice, but I was convinced on the first time. Okay, so um, a little about today. First off, always giving all honor and praises to the God of creation, to all of our elders who have paved the way for us, and all those who struggle to do what's right. <clears throat> Next, I want to talk about the Tekia, which means resurrection in Hebrew, Regenerative Health and Wellness Center. So because of, because of this institution, we're able to have this event today. So downstairs, we have recently opened up a wellness center where you can come and get a lot of your holistic health needs, you know, such as things, such as services, we're offering services such as colon hydrotherapy or colonics, massage therapy, sound therapy. Can you hear me okay? Good. Sound therapy, uh, V-steam or vaginal steaming, oxygen bar, a foot detox, live food demonstrations, vegan food demonstrations, juicing classes, yoga classes, and many more. So we definitely would love for you to be able to come and, you know, utilize the services and support the institution so that we can continue to grow. Okay? Next thing, I want to bring up one of my dear brothers who I grew up watching as a young, young, young son, and he's going to speak about his relationship as it relates to holistic health, um, a little bit about our community, and then also, you know, what his knowledge of is Dr. Africa. And also, at the end of this presentation, please don't go nowhere because at the table, you can see the sister right here holding up the piece of paper. At the end of the event, we're going to take you downstairs in groups to be able to see the spa. So sign up for that and be sure to uh, get with her so that we can put your name on the list. Okay? All right. Good afternoon, everyone. First, giving all praises and honor to the Holy One of Israel, to Nazi Gram and all of the anointed saints that are seeking and serving and pursuing righteousness, I'd like to greet everyone again. Good afternoon. Or as our community, we like to say shalom, shalom, which means peace. We say it twice because we want twice more peace. I mean, we want more peace. And I'd like to welcome all of you all to this afternoon's event because we need content like this. We need venues that allow us to come and expand our minds. As I look out in the audience today, and as we're waiting for Dr. Africa to come, he's here, he'll be up here shortly. But as I look out, I see different people. I see different cultures. I see different spirits. I see different souls. I see different intellects. And that we are all here today because we all have a common desire to be better. We have a common desire to be elevated in our thoughts, in our minds, and in our actions. And I remember years ago, um, because I'm a member of the community here, the African Hebrew Israelites, and I remember years ago before I even found this place, I would drive by, I would go to all different kinds of bookstores because I was in search of something. And we, as we all are, we're always in search of something because that which we have been given just didn't seem right to us. Something just didn't calculate, you know, and some of the words I used to hear, someone would say, it just wasn't kosher, you know, and I didn't understood, I didn't understand back then what that all meant. But in our search for something, when we realize that something is not right, what you have to do, as I've been taught by great scholars that have come before me, is that you have to study. You have to be willing to put aside all of your thoughts and your beliefs, everything that you have been taught, you have to be willing to sit down and say what is right, what is wrong, because one thing is true, and that is truth is identifiable. As a great saying that was shared and given to us uh, by our Northern Spiritual Leader, Ben Ami, he said, truth has the inherent power to produce the promised effects. And for me, it has taken some years to sit and observe that, but when you see truth and you hear truth, you can identify it give you a perfect example. I was reading 
in a news article this morning looking at the news and there was an article about a child that was born in a Chick-fil-A restaurant. And then so Chick-fil-A said, we're going to give this baby free Chick-fil-A for the rest of their life. And I began to say, wait a minute, something just doesn't make sense about that. Why am I going to feed this baby or give baby this access to free fried foods and preservatives and everything else for the rest of their life just because the baby was born? And well, we know that's a marketing ploy. But it was one of those moments, as Arsenio Hall used to say, he said, things that make you go, hmm, right? You know, same thing, another news article I read this past week, how the, it's, and it's really the dairy industry, there's an attack on things that are labeled as milk, your almond milk, your soy milk, your cashew milk, all those other milks that are out there, and there's an attack on it because they say it doesn't come from an animal. And I just, I looked at it again, I said, this is a crazy world out here. And if our people are not conscious enough to come to events such as this one and get a knowledge, get a higher understanding, all right, then they're going to be continually lost. I try to, to teach my children all the time about, hey, when you pick up something in the store, read the ingredients, right? And if it's not one of those basic ingredients you learned in school, fruit, vegetables, something like that, if you can't even pronounce it, hey, don't put it in your body. And it's so important because... I'm a, my background is I have a nursing background and as a nurse practitioner in, in Alabama, and I work a great deal in the hospitals, and it, it bothers me when I go into these arenas, and I, I, I look at the dietary aspect of what's there. I'm like, how does Coca-Cola get a beverage contract for a hospital? It just doesn't make sense, you know, or... Or, or why is it that a man, and I'm, what I'm telling you are true stories. I, I go in and I see a man here with half his foot has been amputated. There's another part of his foot where some uh, bacteria have been eating away at his foot. And he's a diabetic. Then I turn and look over to the side and he's got nutter butters here. He's got a 32 ounce, you know, drink that's over here that his family's been bringing in. But the reality is they don't understand the state of insanity that they're in. You hear what I'm saying? They need another kind of education. The healthcare system, as much as it's been, you know, as, as I'm in it, I understand that it's there to make money. We all know pharmaceutical companies are here to make money. They're not here, you know, to give you that EpiPen or anything else. They're not here to teach you preventative medicine at a cheap price. They don't even want you to know about preventative medicine. They don't even want you to know about the natural remedies that are out there. And if you, as a practitioner, start using those natural remedies, guess what? They come after you. And if you ever want to read an interesting story, read about the origins of the American Medical Association and its fight against natural practitioners during the day. It's a fascinating story. And it will show you exactly what their intent was and why they wanted to maintain control, because it always comes down to this. And so now, without further ado, what I want to do is introduce Dr. Africa, now holistic health doctor, practitioner, and um, without further ado, I'm going to bring him up. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here, to walk vertical again. This is about uh, health and Health is about your culture. The culture defines what health is for you. In fact, your culture is the basis for everything you see, touch, and hear. You see through the eyes of your culture. Your culture gives you beliefs, and from beliefs, you get emotional. You got that? He's writing. I'm going to take my time because I like to see people write. Your culture gives you beliefs, from beliefs you get emotions, and your reaction to an emotion is called a feeling. Beliefs are reinforced with rituals and ceremonies. The only two types of human behavior is a ritual and a ceremony. A ritual is I say hello to you, you say hello to me, that's a ritual. But if we add singing and dancing, there's a hello ceremony. There's no such thing as a law. Those are rituals. 
And of course, the Europeans tell you ignorance of their beliefs is no excuse for not following their beliefs. We disguise the word belief in science with the word theory. A theory is a belief, it is not a fact. We have the theory of the left hemisphere and right hemisphere of the brain. We have the theory of the mind, the theory of the Oedipus complex. Those are beliefs, they are not facts. Your mind does not function like a Greek fairy tale called Oedipus. It's absurd. We have the belief, the theory of gravity. We have the antioxidant belief. We have the free radical belief. We have the thyroid belief. Those are beliefs of the Europeans. They are not facts. The unfortunate thing about us black folks is we take their beliefs for facts. There's not that many facts in a chemistry book. I teach chemistry. There's not that many facts in a biology book. I teach biology. They, we teach beliefs. We're just coming in the back door to make you white, coconut head. I have a lot of respect for beliefs. I have a belief that I'll be free one day. It's a belief. I can't prove it. It's not a fact. And you should accept beliefs for what they are. It's just the idea of a culture and to keep you focused on that culture. Now, somewhere along the line, we think that everyone should read. I write books. Reading will not make you intelligent. God made you intelligent. Reading helps you exercise your intelligence. But reading cannot make you intelligent. Let's be clear. So what I'm saying is intelligence comes in visual intelligence, sound intelligence, smell intelligence, touch intelligence. There are more forms of intelligence than just reading a book. Some people have more smell intelligence than you. They can walk in this room and say, I don't know. It's getting a stunned smell right in here. I'm not talking about a fart. I'm talking about, you know. <laughs> they have other intelligence. I, I don't like uh, he's talking all right, but I'm getting the wrong feeling from him. See, that's tactile intelligence. There are other forms of intelligence. 80% of the people in the world today cannot read or write. That's how it was in Egypt. That's how it is today. You don't need to know how to read and write and be a fisherman or a carpenter. Don't think this reading and writing is going to open some big door for you. It's not going to happen. That's just another hype of the Europeans. That you can improve and advance. Ants have not improved in advance. Roaches have not improved in advance. They're still around. Improve and advance is a European concept. Don't go for the hype. What you want to do is practice your culture at all times and in all situations. If you can't do that, you're not free. Freedom is the ability to practice your culture at all times and in all situations. That's freedom. If you can't do that, you're not free. Were you born under African ceremony and ritual? No. Not at all. You weren't allowed to practice your culture even how you were born. You're not allowed to practice your culture even how you die. You got to go through a European ceremony. Come on. Someone stripped away your culture so you don't have the legs to run on. But nonetheless, I'm not here to uh, beat down the Europeans. They are what they are. The sky is what it is. The tree is what it is. The rat's what it is. And Europeans are what they are. I have no problems with them. I have problems with us not utilizing what God has given us. We are the key to our freedom. Don't wait on the Europeans. Don't wait on white people to free you. If you think they're going to free you, you need to ask the American Indians. <laughs> no, we are, the, we are the source of our freedom. Now, the issue is with, um, well, I always said an ignorant Negro with a knife and fork is a dangerous person. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's how I look at it. I mean, 
Why you want to eat a pigtail when you know it's where it's been stuck at all day? Why you want to eat an ox's tail when you know where it's been stuck at all day? Just be real. If you want to eat some shit, go ahead. <laughs> now look at here. I am not all of that smart or anything. I struggle with the information just like you do. I struggle to learn this stuff in school. It just didn't make sense to me until I could relate it to something alive and living. And when I got into what you call today holistic medicine, which is a term invented by the Europeans. Uh, naturopath is a term they invented in 1946. I think that was Schindler did that one. The thing is that we do not know who we are dealing with. So I wrote in a revised book, Nutritional Destruction of the Black Race. How the Europeans behaved in the caves, how they had sex in the caves, how they raised their children in the caves, how they fought wars in the caves. I wrote about that cave civilization. And then you'll see that the, that is the foundation of all their cultures all over the world. You have to know someone call you up and say, I'm lost, I'm trying to find Abernathy. I'm going to ask them, where are you coming from? Then I can give them directions. So you say, uh, we got to get our freedom, we got to control the education. Yeah, but where are the Europeans coming from? And once you find out where they're coming from, then you know how to deal with them. So I wrote out their whole cave history documented by the Greeks and the Romans. I didn't make it up, but I'm telling you how they talked about these people. And you need to know that you can't get in the ring with Meriwether or Muhammad Ali blindfolded and expect to win. You need to know where these people came from and how they behave and why they believe and what they believe. What they ate and what they didn't eat. I go through the whole thing with them. Only took 44 pages. I don't want to bore black people. Because, you know, we're scared of a book over 300 pages. I was taught that when I started writing. Hey, don't, don't write above a sixth grade level and don't go over 300 pages. You'll scar a nigger. You'll scar him. Everything was kind of laid out correctly for us uh, before we were born. You were put in your mother's wound, as the Greeks would call it, because they thought the woman's penis was cut off. Don't even use the word wound around me, please. I was in my mother's uterus. I went from titty to titty like I go from city to city. <laughs> so anyway, you're inside your mother's uterus, not her wound. And you're inside the placenta, which is like the shell on an egg. And inside the placenta is the amniotic fluid, which you would call the whites inside of an egg, and you, which would be the yolk. As everyone got a visual, I know y'all know chickens. Some of y'all growing feathers, you eat so much of it. So, so I'm relating this to chickens. I can go into pigs now, but we're going to stay, keep it real, chickens. So you're inside this amniotic fluid which is the fluid of Amman, which is God, the holy waters. And inside of this water is little stuff you call electrolytes. They give off electrical charges. Uh, so when your mother's angry, you get these yellow flashes so the baby can see anger. And the baby drinks the amniotic fluid so the baby can taste anger. The baby can feel the amniotic fluid so the baby can feel anger. The baby can hear the electrical charges, so the baby can hear anger. To the baby, anger is holistic. And if it's not connected to all the baby's senses, the baby will say, that don't make sense. Because it's got to be connected to all your senses. And that's how your intelligence works. They call it in my business neuroimaging. We can photograph when you're angry without you opening your mouth. Because we can see what organs light up and what organs don't light up. You see, all of that you learned in your mother's uterus, not in her womb. And so from then on, if I want to manipulate you, I got to manipulate you with all of those senses. So I use a color to manipulate you. That's why Georgia has a flag. Then I use a fruit to manipulate you. That's why Georgia has a peach taste. So I'm connecting all your senses to the concept of Georgia. 
Is anyone following this or do I have to go over it? Because this is not a white lecture. You, you don't understand what I'm saying. Say something. I mean, they treat me like I'm a white person. So all your senses are connected to every thought that you have. You don't have an ego and superego. That is a Greek concept. That's Greek. That's the belief of the Europeans. Your thoughts start from your brain stem. That's where your thoughts start from. That's where your emotions start from. That's where your sexuality starts from. All this happened before you were born. Before you were born, you talk. It wasn't clear. You went, you know, get the knees. Before you were born, you talk. Before you were born, you could feel. All of these things happened before you were born. You just didn't emerge from the uterus, which is the only time you have the word emergency in medicine is when you emerge from the uterus. If you say you have emergency, you're lying. You got a crisis. It's only one emergency when you emerge from your mother's uterus. But I don't get into all that teaching stuff. I'm just trying to run down this stuff. Uh, so nonetheless, you had all of this stuff united before you were born. Your emotions start from your brain stem. Then it goes up your brain stem and cascades like the branches of a tree. Some of y'all know what a tree is. It's not an analog concept, you know. So it branches out like the branches of a tree. And then it connects to everything. That's why you have love connected to anger. Someone could be in love with you and be angry with you. You know that's the truth. Because every emotion is connected to every emotion. We call that a neural net. It's like a spider web. Everything is connected to everything. You can be angry with somebody and still be in love with them. You know that. Like white people hate you, but they love you. They can't get through a day without saying the word nigga. You know that. So anyway, let's keep going on. So everything cascades like out like the branches of the tree. Because your thoughts just unite to everything. There's no such thing as a subconscious. Where is it on a subway some damn where? What are you talking about? These are European concepts. Some things you can remember easy. Some things you cannot. That's all. That's, that's it. Why are you making up all these terms about this in my subconscious? There ain't no subconscious. There ain't no subway system in your head, Negro. So we're trying to like get a better understanding. That's why Carter G. Wilson said it took him 20 years to get over his white education. 20 years. Miseducated in music. Miseducated in biology. Miseducated in chemistry. Miseducated in economics. Mis all of that. We have been totally miseducated. You cannot control an intelligent person. Ignorance rules the world. An ignorant Negro will buy a pig foot with bunions on it. <laughs> Ignorance rules the world. So what we're talking about here is getting a better understanding of ourselves so we can get a better understanding of how reality really works. Now, as some of y'all know my little history. You know I was a nurse in the military, did all that stuff, cutting off arms, legs, you know, the usual military stuff. But nonetheless, I'm trying to tell you how we function. The soldiers shoot at each other, but that's not how you win a war. You win a war by killing women and children. Soldiers don't work in factories. Women and children do, so you bomb the factory. You kill the source of supply. You've been told it's the soldiers. No, it's not the soldiers. The more women you kill, the better off you are. You bomb the factories. There's nobody in there but women and children. They tell you all the time. Well, you're looking at these soldiers shooting at each other, please. That's not how it's done. We bomb the factory. Then we send in the rape squad, which I was in charge of. Because you can't win a war without raping women. It demoralizes your opponent when his mother's been raped, you see? Misdirects his emotions. I don't know what you've been taught about war. I was in two of them, so I'm just telling you. Whatever you know about war is stupid. You've been looking at too much TV or television. 
Telegram, Telenigra. I thought that's kind of how that used to go. Anyway, you've been looking at too much television. When you shoot a person, the whole person will fall down, the leg go over there, the arm go over there, the eyeball go over there, splash all over the wall. The whole person don't fall down. Who taught you that stupid stuff? <laughs> you know who taught you that. Same person, person who taught you what, what sex was all about. Yeah, that's right. Because we still have slave sex, you know that. You know our ancestors prayed before they had sex, because it's a spiritual activity. You know that. And I'm not talking about, oh, Jesus is good. I'm talking about, <laughs> it was a real prayer. May any fruit from this labor be protected by the Spirit of God and guarded by my art. A real spiritual ceremony, because God invented sex, so it's got to be spiritual. But what do we do? We throw God out the bedroom, and who we invite in there? <laughs> the Europeans. Nonetheless, I don't want to scare nobody because I don't have that many friends anyway. So. <laughs> so I'm just trying to say you're coming out the uterus and you have the spiritualization and everything is African centered, as they say today. Concept that's been about Malefe Asante. But nonetheless, we know when to eat because we were fed every four to six hours we drank amniotic fluid. So we were all put on the right eating schedule because it takes four hours for your stomach to empty. You eat a meal at nine o'clock, your stomach ain't empty. You go into bed with that food on your stomach and it's going to rot. And then you're going to wake up and try to talk to somebody and your breath smell like a skunk fart. You know what I mean? Because that food's on your stomach rotting. Because it takes four hours to empty your stomach. We were put on the right schedule by God. But somebody else introduced this whole thing to you and you, and we went the wrong path there. Nonetheless, we know that air is over. The air that my ancestors breathed is not here anymore. I hope you know that. The water they drank is not here anymore. We got new Negroes that do the internet. The old Negroes are gone. We got new ignorant Negroes who can't read cursive. I'm telling you, we got a whole nother thing. But water's over, air is over. You know food is totally polluted. The average person needs two tablespoons of raid a day. So we got to look at this thing and see it for what it is. It's nothing more than the Europeans acting like Europeans. What did you expect? Crocodiles to act like crocodiles. Nothing's gone new and improved. This is the hype of the Europeans. No, you want to instill in yourself the principles of your ancestors. You want to realize that the food on your table is Africa. The round plate is the sun god, Rod. The spoon is the moon god. They have four children. That's why it's four prongs on the fork today. African concept. That's why you put the ring on this finger. African concept. Your spirit, your mind. I don't want to get too deep in it. This finger represents your double. That's why you put the ring on the finger. Introduced by Africans. Africa is all around you. It's just miseducated in your brain. So when you see it, you don't see it. We got about... 40 or 50 tons of love songs on the radio, from Smokey to Robinson to, uh, uh, what's that, uh, Michael uh, Jackson. I was going to say Michael Jordan, but it's the same thing to me, though. But in any case, um, all these, uh, uh, 50 cents, is he up to a quarter or a dollar now? Uh, I don't know. I'm just saying you got all of these people singing all this love stuff, and the problem we have is love. That's our big problem. We don't love ourselves, so we can't love each other. These love songs are not helping us, because we love them from a European concept, you see? You cannot access black intelligence with a white program. You're trying to access love, but you use the European concept of it. The Romans, romance. You understand what I'm saying here? Into their lunar cycle. We are solar people, sun people, and you're into the lunar cycle. I want to have a honeymoon. What are you talking about? That's lunar. We are solar. So we're into all of this stuff from their concept, you see. We want to own the woman. 
you see. That's my stuff. Yeah. yeah. We make women into objects. That's why so many objects on TV, hair commercial, lip com that makes a woman into an object. You don't see it that way. You're in the forest and don't see the trees. High heels, lipstick, all those commercials makes a woman into an object. And men are taught to use and abuse objects. That's how we're taught. An object is something you use and abuse and get rid of when you finish with it. Because the next woman is always better than the last woman. I'm telling you how we roll. I'm exposing the language of the hood because I used to be a hoodie. That's the European concept. The European concept is when a lady is pregnant, she's pregnant. That's not, that's not African. If she's pregnant, you're pregnant. Pregnancy involves three people. The baby's pregnant with two adults, birthing them as parents. You still with me here? The mother's pregnant with the child and the father, and the father's pregnant with the mother and the child. Everybody's pregnant in our culture. If you want me to do it scientifically, I will do it. The baby raises this oxytocin level which is a bonding hormone, which raises the mother's oxytocin level, and she hugs her husband, which raises his oxytocin level. Then he hugs her back, which raises her oxytocin level, and she says, oh, I'm feeling good today, and she raises the baby's oxytocin level, which is known as the circle that's unbroken. You see? We are looking at the whole thing, but we're looking at it through the eyes of the Europeans. They just crawled out of the caves. Give them a break. <laughs> but I go through all of that in nutritional destruction of the black people. I go right through it. And everybody, I know white people, sure, that you can't sit that around white people, can you? Yeah. Because I'm telling the truth. They never argue with me because I talk science. I can break that stuff down. Just They say, yeah, he's, he's telling the truth. <laughs> They never argue with me about anything because I'm just talking science. The only people that ever bother me is Negroes. <laughs> they threaten my life. You know, they, if I let them into my house, they'll poison my toilet paper. I don't trust a certified Negro under warranty. I just don't. Let me talk about these books here. You know, so you know what I'm talking about. Oh boy, that's a lot of damn books. Oh, shoot. oh yeah, it's mine. Hey, hey, hey. Sorry. Uh, this is the book I was referring to, Nutritional Destruction of Black People. And that's when I get into the cave social life of the Europeans. 40 pages, that's all. Don't worry about it. And I also, uh, yeah, thank you. And this is a book on controlling and understanding black children. I go through the birth schedule of black children, not the white one in the book, and I document it with white documentation to show that we grow at a faster pace than Europeans. We learn at a faster pace than Europeans, all documented by the Europeans coming out of that uh, Coca-Cola school, Emory. That's how they make their money, you know. So this is the right growth and development schedule of black children. I teach you how to stop them from sucking their thumb. I teach you how to stop them from cussing you out, even though some of y'all deserve it. Um, I teach you how to stop them from bed wetting. Things that we know, that we need to know how to do. I don't go through all that little stupid stuff. I'm just telling you how to deal with a black, how to trap them in a conversation and spin it around on them without them knowing it. How to trap them into a lie without them knowing it. I teach you all those skills that they, the CIA and FBI use. Yeah. So you can talk to them and find out whether they lie or not. And they don't even know you're doing it. I teach you all that manipulation skills. Because I was raised by a black woman, you know. So I'm, I'm a little different from some people. I wasn't raised on cow's milk. I was raised on breast milk. So I kind of think different when I see some tits. <laughs> I didn't mean to go there. I'm a ghetto niece. You know I'm from the ghetto. I'm a ghetto niece. 
Yes. This book is about the pills for ills, which is the European documentation by the FDA that their drugs do not work. And I have the documentation that they did on their drugs from Tylenol to aspirin that they do not work. Uh, pills for ills that can kill. Thank you. Oh, this is Gullah, African American history. I take you through what people call the Geechee in, in Louisiana, how we came over. Not came, we didn't volunteer, did we? Some Negroes did, I know they did. Buy me some change, bastard, buy me some change. No, I'm talking about some, how we were captured and we were prisoners of war brought over here. And I go through how we talked, because you used to read in history with these dates and stuff. I'm telling you how we talked, how we prayed, how we planted escapes, how we planted rebellions. I go through all of that stuff. And that white racist person known as Abraham Lincoln, I use his own words to say he didn't like Negroes. I use his own words to say he hated black people. In his own words, written in his own handwriting. And of course I go through George Washington and herself. <laughs> you knew George was gay, didn't you? I'm sorry. I didn't want to upset nobody. Y'all in Atlanta. Come on. <laughs> and this is a health dictionary. So you know what's in these health food stores. You just pick up and say, what's that for? It's in here. I go through the vitamins, the minerals, the amino acids, and the foods you can use to cure a disease. So you're no longer lost. And this is the health dictionaries. Uh, thank you um, everybody asked me about melanin, and I, uh, I was invited to the melanin conference, I think it was in 1980, by someone named uh, Tony Browder. Yeah. Because I learned about it in Germany, where they used to make lamps out of our skin and, and guitars and stuff like that. I learned it from a nice Nazi. That's what my teacher said. He said, I was a nice Nazi. So... So he taught me all that stuff and showed me the lamps made out of your skin and how to use the bones to tune things, your bones, all that sort of stuff. But I use the scientific language uh, to explain melanin, what to eat to improve it, what to eat to nourish your melanin, that sort of thing, how to test the melanin yourself. Uh -uh. And this is called melanin, the power and science of melanin. And this is probably my uh, greatest work. It's Holistic self-diagnosis teaches you how to diagnose your lips to find out whether you're sick or not. Probably kissing a white woman anyway. Uh, teach you how to diagnose your, yourself through your eyes, your fingernails, your teeth, your tongue, your eyebrows, your eyelashes. Don't read the signs. Just go to the pictures. You know you read pictures anyway. So I have all these pictures in here. They teach you how to do it yourself. And they teach you how to look at your blood pressure numbers and what those numbers mean. 130 over 80 means something totally different from 140 over 80. And I teach you what those numbers mean, teach you how to read your blood tests, all the things you need to know how to do to survive yourself, because you can't depend on these hospitals, I'm telling you. Not these hospitals, they'll do you in. <laughs> So this book is called uh, Holistic Self-Diagnosis. And everything is on sale, cheaper than you can buy it online. Uh, we do accept, no, we don't accept food stamps anymore. We got some, we got some bad ones from, from Detroit, so we don't go into food stamps. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, that's Jamon. He's a computer engineer, smart person, geeky. Nonetheless, we're just trying to get things back in some kind of order so we can see things clearly, so we can see ourselves clearly. Now, don't think because I, I studied in this white country and that white country, I'm smart. I studied with white people. How smart could I be? You know, Obama was raised by a white woman. How smart could he be? Come on, let's keep it real here. Anyway, I went to school. We had a, what they call moving campus. I went to school in Italy and France and all that stuff. And uh, please don't get fascinated. I studied with monks, Bedouin monks, all that. I was very confused. 
So I just did all that stupid stuff. But I think if I was raised by a holistic mother and father, I wouldn't have wasted so many years of my life fumbling around, fumbling around in relationships and fumbling around. If I was sitting this, I think I would have been a much better person. I probably wouldn't be up here talking to you. I tell you that. I'd be home, minding my business. The most difficult thing for a person to do is to mind their own business. I'm just, I'm just telling you. I ain't mean to go there. I'm trying to keep this intelligence, you know. My grandmother would say I'm colleged. That's what she would tell me. You college and all. Why don't you say something college to me? I say, yeah, Grandma, encyclopedia. She said, I knew you were college. <laughs> yeah, she was raised by slaves, so her thinking was a little different. I was studying, because um, I used to be a rape counselor, suicide, and paranoid schizophrenia. I used to work with the normal crazy people. And I was studying... Um, uh, I think it was rape counseling or something. And my grandmother asked me, well, well, what you studying that child? You know, I said, Grandma, I'm studying, you know, how to help women who have been raped. She said, oh, child, all you do is wipe off yourself and keep walking. That was the mentality that was needed for her to survive. I'm just telling you, she said, just wipe yourself off and keep walking. I said, I'm saying to myself, oh, my God, <laughs> you know, what has been done to us? You know, but that's what she needed to to survive. Uh, I'm just saying, so I respect her way of handling that, because who was she going to talk to? <laughs> so, and of course, I've seen lynchings and the usual stuff you see when you're a black person. Uh, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Um, the first time I saw a lynch was a black person, by the way, rinsed by another black person. That's the way it went. White people shoot each other, we shoot each other. We just follow what they do. So, I was in England once uh, with my wife. She was over there. That's that tall lady. Melanie, I'm talking about you. They can't see you, Melanie. Stand up, Melanie. Stand up, Melanie. I hope that gets me out of punishment. So, <laughs> hey, I've been to husband school flunked twice. <laughs> Getting it straight this time. Nonetheless, we uh, we had a winding kind of path, and so I was studying, uh, where was that? I was in a class studying physiology, and uh, my teacher was talking, and, he's, and he stopped to tell this joke, you know what I mean? And all the white kids were laughing. I'm sitting there, what the hell are they laughing about? You know? The missionaries came to Africa, and they had, you know how white people talk out their nose. The missionaries came to Africa, and I'm listening to him. He said, and the the, 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 the the people, the missionaries asked the guy, the black guy, he said, you getting ready to go in that, that area in Africa? They eat people there. They're cannibals there. We can't go in. They said, don't worry about it, missionaries. They only eat beans. I said, okay. So they went in that area, and then they end up in a pot with lettuce and tomatoes and boiling these white people. He said, I thought you said they only eat beans. He said, yeah, human beans. <laughs> so, so all the white people laughing. I'm saying, damn, you know, <laughs> whatever. I didn't mean to go there. You know, I'm sorry. You know, I'm colleged. So don't think that um, it's very difficult to understand science. The most difficult thing about science is the language. The language we change constantly. We do three things. We name things by color. We call it xanathine, lycopene. You've heard of these words. Rutin, lutin. Those are color names for vitamins. Then we name things by deities. These are the gods of the Greeks and Romans. Thymon, that's a god. Lapratus is a god. Latus is a god. You see, when the Greeks were talking, they were just talking in their language, so they understood it. They said, oh yeah, dorsal is a god. To you, there's some technical name, but they, to the Greeks, they were, just, <laughs> they were just talking. So we name things by color, by deities, and we name things by mathematics. Mathematics is when you use a number and a letter to say something. Mathematics was never, never taught as a science in Africa or Greece. It's a social science. You talk with that language. If I want to talk to a physicist, I use mathematics. It's just a language. Arithmetic is a language. 
that's why Goldman Sachs and these people do this stuff. They know so they know can lie with numbers. That's any accountant. It's just a language, but we think it's a science, and that's our big problem. So sometimes I just read a math book just for the fun of it all. I look at it and say, oh, that's what that cracker's saying. You know, and I laugh and everything. But that's another subject altogether. So just remember that they're not talking science. They're talking their beliefs. And they're switching language to express their belief. And you think they're talking science. They are not. There's not that much science in a science book. If something eats, it's going to bust it. It's going to have a bowel movement. Uh, and it's going to urinate. If it eats, it's got to have a bowel movement. It's got to urinate. It's got to bust a turret somewhere. Right? The tree and the plants have a bowel movement under the root. It looks a little white stuff under the root. The trees pee through the leaves. The heat evaporates the moisture in the leaves. That's how the tree pees. I switch language and say evaporation. You think I'm something <laughs> All I'm doing is switching language to say the same thing. If you breathe out, you've got to breathe in. And you can't do both of them at the same time. You cannot walk forward and backwards at the same time. That's the limitation of this bipolar body. Bipolar, I mean, one pole is your mother, the other pole is your father. Everyone is bipolar. And when somebody said they're bipolar, I said, yeah, I know you're made by your mother and father. Two different poles. Now, what's wrong with you? You see, we just switch language to keep you all confused here. There's it's nothing much going on. If I'm talking to a chemist, I don't say male principle and female principle. I say alkaline for female and acid for male. I'm just switching language, but I'm constantly saying the same thing. That's why I can teach chemistry, biology, physicists, and math and all that stuff, because I'm just, to me, it's just a language. The problem is that we confuse their beliefs with science. Your culture gives you beliefs. From your beliefs, you get emotions. A reaction to an emotion is called a feeling. A feeling that lasts a long time is called a mood. All you're doing is studying the culture of the Europeans. And they are clear that they're not facts. That's why they say the theory of evolution, the theory of gravity, the theory of the speed of light. They say this beliefs, beliefs, beliefs. You might as well study Mother Goose. If you're going to study a belief, keep it real. Study Hansel and Gretel, you know, whatever. Study some other Santa Claus. Whatever. A belief is just that. So when they talk this stuff, I'm saying, yeah, I got the belief. Now tell me something. And they don't have nothing to tell me, so I just walk away. That's why, that's why I'm damaged. I'm dysfunctional. I'm just telling you. The only thing white in my house is toilet paper. Because I want to give the white people some shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm psychologically messed up. I'm sorry. I'm a dysfunctional person. So, let us just focus on our culture like everyone else does. No matter how organic or non-genetically modified the food is, a Chinese wants to see Chinese food. I'm telling you, Italian wants to see Italian food. Indians want to see Indian food. They put your culture first, then the food second. That's what they do. They say, that's Latin music. That's Chinese music. They put their culture first, then the music. And you follow what they're doing? They do it all the time. They say it right in your face. So we got to do that same thing you know, to reclaim ourselves. We put our culture first, food second. Your culture defines what you eat. If you cannot read hieroglyphics, they painted it in the walls of the pyramids. It <laughs> shows what they ate. They painted it. You don't have to read it. Just look at the pictures. Because the culture defined that. The culture defines how you're born, the rituals and ceremonies you use for that. The culture defines how you dress, how you dance, your music. Your culture does all of that. It's not very difficult. The most difficult thing to do is to overcome your conditioning. You're conditioned to serve white people. You want a white person's degree, diploma, Grammy, Emmy. That's what you want. You can't visualize freedom unless it's in a white civilization. That is very sad. I have nothing against the Europeans. I'm just saying 
that is their stuff. This is our stuff. Draw a line in the sand and say, hey, that's your stuff. I, and this is my stuff. That's all you have to do. You don't have to walk around being angry with white people. What for? They don't understand you emotionally anyway. They have an emotional illness. White supremacy is a psychosis. These people are crazy. You call them, oh, it's white supremacy. No, it's not. It's a mental illness. The predominant thing we have is the emotional illness. When I was working as a psychotherapist, I met maybe one or two people that are mentally ill. I say, uh, crazy nigga, uh, how much is one and one? They say two. Nothing wrong with mine. <laughs> Nothing at all. They were emotionally damaged. Either their mother was stressed in the first trimester, which caused them to have bonding problems for the rest of their life. Second trimester, which caused them to have incompetence. Third trimester would cause them not to have ability to be intimate. It's when you stress the mother is when the high much well you damage the woman, which damages the man, which damages the child. All that's in my book. I write down everything because I'm not going to live forever. And not around Negroes. You know, I may have a chance around some black people. But I don't know. But, you know, a Negro is a dangerous thing. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. I, I understand what happened to uh, Colin in his bowels, a uh, Colin Powell. I understand OJ, you know. Uh, I understand Tiger in the woods. I mean, we were conditioned to think white people are beautiful. You know that. That's why we like Haley Berry and all that stuff. That's why every movie that Denzel stars in is supporting white culture. Call me a lie. He's always saving white people. Training Day, you see. All the movies. Equalizer. You can go there. He's always saving white culture. But that makes sense to us because we're conditioned. I'm saying, why don't he save some of us? You know, I'm saying, why? You know, I, I'm sitting there frustrated. But I, that's, that's, I have nothing against Denzel. I've given lectures at his school in New York where he used to act and all that stuff. I you know, have nothing against it. I have nothing against uh, uh, Miles Davis, Sammy Davis Jr., uh, Billy Holiday, I'm naming the gay people. Lorraine Hansberry, Tina Turner, I'm just letting you know. Because you have this fantasy idea. But if you in this business of entertainment and you're entertaining white people, you have to be emotionally connected to them. You have to read the audience. So you're letting that spirit inside of you. That's why the people in the entertainment get so messed up. Because they're letting the white spirit in them. That's why Miles Davis was bisexual. Richard Pryor was bisexual. I'm just, everybody knows about Paul and the Mo Lil Mooney. I mean, that's not a big thing. Oh, do they? Uh, Paul Mooney, you ever heard of him? I'm just saying, they were entertaining white people and they let their spirit in them. And so they become these, this, a creation, an alien to themselves. And aliens only worship aliens. Amos Wilson. All I'm trying to say is we have to draw a line to separate this stuff. This is what they eat. This is what I eat. Because we're on a military diet. The Europeans are very military. They carry this high starch diet with them. That's why we're eating all this potatoes and, and all this different bread. Spaghetti is number boiled bread. Pasta is boiled bread. Come on. A pizza is just a bread sandwich. We're just eating bread, bread, bread. And we don't make no bread. It's just starch driven bread fruits, potatoes, rice. Starch, starch, starch. And that causes a big problem. Because your body wants green carbohydrates, cauliflower, you see, which is a fruit. All flowers are fruits. Cauliflower is a fruit. Blocky florets are fruit. Okra's a fruit. All beans are fruit. Tomatoes are fruit. I'm just going through fruit. All beans are fruit. Your diet is 90% fruit. Some of y'all take it too far and become a fruit, but I'm just saying. <laughs> but we eat 90% fruit. Corn is a fruit. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Corn is a fruit. It's the fruiting part of the plant. Corn is a fruit. Rice is a fruit. Beans are fruit. Cauliflower is a fruit. We have been miseducated even about food. That is ridiculous. 
And you trust these people to educate you about something after 450 years? You trust them? I have nothing against them. You know, liars want to be around liars. You know that. Crackheads want to be around crackheads. You don't find no crackhead hanging with no alcoholic. They ain't that high. <laughs> so they, they just, you know, what they say, birds of a feather flocked. You know this old stuff. All I'm trying to say is, you ugly and all your friends are ugly. That's all I'm saying. Y'all are some ugly people. You can make an ugly sandwich. I'm just saying, birds of a feather flock together. You know all of that. You know. Let's give it up for Dr. Africa. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna sell some products. I'll take your place for a second. Yeah, yeah. Tell them about the products over there. Oh, y'all didn't know I could stand up. Stand up. How's everyone doing? Good. It's good to see my brothers and sisters in the house. Did you know how powerful you are? If you know how powerful you are, stick your fist in there. Hi, stick your fist if you know you're powerful. That's what I'm talking about. I'm powerful too, so I stick my fist in there as well. Thank you, my brothers and sisters. I want to tell you that your body tells everything. It don't lie. Okay? So when somebody asks you how you're doing, a lot of times you say I'm doing good, but it don't look like it. Okay? What you put in your mouth is vital. Okay? When you eat, the food goes in, and then whatever it is, if it's bad, you're going to look what? You're going to look bad. But if it's good, you're going to look what? All right? So let's talk about our habits. Okay? How many vegetarians do I have in the house? All right, all right. How many aspiring vegetarians do we have in the house? That's why we keeping it real. So tell me what kind of meat you eat. Fish. Chicken. Beef. Buffalo. Bu- oh, I got a buffalo in the house. Okay, buffalo. What else? Who? Shrimp. Okay, that sounds good too. What else? Deer. Turkey. So we have all these animals that we're consuming. Now, when you're eating this animal, you must make sure that you don't eat this animal with a what? A starch, a carbohydrate. How many of us are eating the animal, because it's respectfully what it is, with a carbohydrate? And you don't have to raise your hand. I'm not asking you to throw yourself under the bus. But I'm saying if you have like your meat and you have it with rice, you have then broken a law. Do you understand that? So the meat has to go with the veg only. That's the right way to do something wrong. You cannot drink and eat at the same time. Okay? So if you're going to eat the animal, you can't eat carbohydrates, and you definitely shouldn't be drinking with it. Okay? A lot of us say, I got to give me something to drink to wash it down. Have we ever heard that before? Well, what you're doing when you're washing it down, you're telling the body that, hey, there's three different foods inside of the digestive tract. The duodenum is the only place that digestion takes place. So there's only one thing that can digest. So if you have a meat, if you have a starch, and you have a liquid, and the body says, I'm only going to break down the easiest one, which one is it going to break down? It's going to break down the liquid. I knew my brothers and sisters out here were smart. So what's going to happen to the meat and the carbohydrate? It's going to go straight into the intestines. How many of us, you don't have to raise your hand, feel gassy sometimes? Okay? Well, that's what happens. It's a gas station. That's correct. (laughs) Absolutely. You ate a meat and a carbohydrate. Okay? Meats putrefy and carbohydrates ferments. Okay? So what happens when you start to feel gassy, the intestines is actually trying to do what the dual denim should have done. Okay, the intestines were not made to digest food. So that's when you start feeling bloated. How many of us be trying to fit into some clothes? You understand? But, you know, we try to get the men. I'm, no, I know I'm not talking to the men in the house. I'm going to say girdles because I know my ladies, you understand where I'm coming from. You try to suck it up so you can make look good in that dress. It's from incorrect eating. 
And we have all done it, including myself. Okay? It's okay to have erred, but you have to at some point understand that you're erring and correct it. Okay? So does my meat eaters, do you feel me? Okay? So to be powerful, you must kind of change what you do. So if you're going to eat meat, I'm not going to knock you. I know what that's like. But it's, it takes a long time for that meat to digest. Okay? So you ate this meat, and it's still in there next week. And a lot of us have um, issues going to the bathroom. And that's one primary reason why you can't use the bathroom. We call it number two. I don't know why they gave them numbers. But that's why number two is not working that well. Okay? So a lot of us go and get our colonoscopies. We take enemas, find out what's going on inside your body. Have you ever, first thing you do when you wake up in the morning, you go in the bathroom and you just first thing you be looking at your face like, I wonder what this is. Well, he has a book that can tell you, okay, what it is. So I'm going to talk about the face and we're going to talk about the void. And don't try to analyze me because I'm up here talking, okay? And. Oh, bring it to me. Thank you. Okay, I'm sorry about that interruption. So what I want you to do, we're going to look at the forehead. With the forehead, the forehead should be clear. Can you tell me what a forehead looks like when it's not correct? When you have um, spots or something on your skin, can you guys name what would not be right to a clear canvas? Wrinkles. Wrinkles. And don't look at mine, like I said. Okay? So what we're looking for is a high concentration of either lines, bumps, bruises. You can say, this happened to me as a kid. I fell off a bike. I don't care. Why did it happen there? The body's always trying to tell you something. Okay? So your forehead is your intestines. Okay? So in your intestinal area, you have a lower, middle, and upper intestines. So you can look at lines in your head and you can say, oh, you're having intestinal issues. And you know if you're having intestinal issues, you can say, I need to work on that. How do you work on your intestines? Herbs. What else? Fasting and cleansing. A lot of us talk about fasting, and we don't know exactly how to do that. Because if you tell me that you're fasting, you're just drinking juice, you're eating. Because the body has to digest the juice. It's a good try, though. I get it. I understand, but it's just not all the way on. My fingerprint will do it. So, we're going to go now to up underneath the eyes. Have you ever seen dark circles up underneath the eyes? Do you know what organ that indicates? The kidneys. That's correct. So, if you notice that you're having kidney issues, what should you do? Water. What else? Cranberry juice. What else sounds good? Cucumber juice, that's good. How about stop eating a lot of salt? Okay. You ate a lot of salt. Salt. Things that contain salt. When you eat out, you don't know what's in the food. You go to people's house and the food is good, you have to ask them, did you add salt to this? Okay? Because that's why a lot of us have high blood pressure issues. So, yes, all the things that you named were good, but you have to know exactly what you did. Thank you, Dr. Africa. This is the face that I was actually referring to. No, that's not my face. So we were talking about the kidneys. Now let's talk about the cheeks. Some of us have spots on our cheeks, okay, darkness on our cheeks. That's indicative to the lungs. Can you believe that? The body is so amazing. A lot of us have never smoked before and have bad lungs. How did that happen? What, what, what happened? Pollution? Heavy metals? Breathing in? There's a lot of things that we're exposed to that we have no idea about. Okay? So that's the face. You can go through the rest of it. I'm going to go through the hand real quick because I love the hand. That's right. So I want everybody, who's my right-handers in the house? All right, so I want you to look at your right hand. Who are my left-handers in the house? All right, I'm not going to forget about y'all. Look at your left hand. 
In your hand, you have three lines. There's a bottom line by your thumb, point to it. There's a line in the middle, point to it. And there's a line right up by the fingers, point to it. Does everybody, has everybody located their line? Okay, so the hand that you're looking at is your present and future hand. It means it's going on right now. So we're going to look at the line that's at the bottom, the bottom line, okay, which is your digestive line. Now I want you to look at this line. Does it seem like it's broken? Is it thin? Is it a solid line? Is it strong from top to bottom? Now with this line, you have a lower, middle, and upper side to that line. The lower is down here. Then you have middle, then you have upper. So tell me, where's your broken spots at on your lines? Is it lower, middle, or upper? You don't have it strong? You strong? Okay, that's good. Does anybody have any broken lines on that? Is it lower or middle or upper? Lower. Middle? Okay. Do I have any lower? You got lower? Do I have any upper? Okay, so the upper part of that line means you are not actually breaking down your foods. You could be eating too fast. You could be wrongly combining your foods, okay? The middle part of that is that you're not digesting it correctly, okay? The actual digestive process. And the lower part of that line means you're not eliminating correctly. Isn't that crazy? The body does not tell any, it's no secrets with it if you know how to read it. So let's go to the middle line. How many people have a strong middle line? It's strong. I see one, two. Okay, I see quite a few. How many people have a very faint line? It's a very thin line in the middle. It's a short, so any, any short middle lines, raise your hand. Raise them high so I can see. Okay, you guys have a short temper. Don't want to mess with you. I ain't mean to call you out like that. I'm just saying. Okay, their nerves are thin. When they say you getting on my nerves, it's literal. You really getting on their nerves. Okay? The body doesn't hide any secrets. And that's something you like. Don't look at my hand. Okay? So, if that line is thin or broken, and it, at the top part of the line it gets strong, it means as you get older in life, it will get better. But when it's fainting, you don't see it. Meditate often. Okay? Isn't that amazing? Does anybody, do you feel me? Okay, as long as you're feeling me, I'm going to continue. So this top line is a circulatory line. And you have a lower, a middle, and an upper of your circulatory line. Lower, middle, and upper. Okay? Okay? Now, how many of us have lines that kind of split in that top line? Okay. How many of us have lines that break? You can see it, and then it's faint, and then you can see it some more, then it's faint. Okay. Is it, you follow me? Now, if you have the splitting at the top of that line, you have to be careful of dementia and Alzheimer's and staying in your mind a lot. You think a lot. Sometimes you take mental vacations and you just don't want to come back. Okay? You got to you got to really pay attention to blood pressure issues. Okay? Now the lower part of that because it's a circulatory system is your lower system. So it could be your reproductive system. It could be the circulation to your legs and your feet. Okay? The middle part of that line, if it's broken, it's right here in the middle part of your body. So it is in your intestinal area, by your stomach, your spleen, your liver, poor circulation in that area. Now, can you believe that? Okay. Can I continue? Okay. You didn't stop me if I'm boring you now. Okay. So that's just the hand. So now that I've taught you how to do the present and the future, now you can go and look at the other hand and look and see where you came from because that's the past. Okay? Now there are other lines in the hands that you can tell about. I'm just going to skip it because you are going to ask me, what does it look like? I really, you, I would have to have a, a PowerPoint to actually show you, okay? So now 
I want to know if anybody in here really knows if you're a burden. Burden. Have a lot of burdens. Worry. And she said, "Mm mm-mm. I want to know how many of there's anybody in here and you look just blink your eye if you think that you burden so don't nobody know okay just blink your eye and I can see it if you think you're burdened just blink your eye this is how it shows the body when somebody's walking up to you or say you're going into the line of a bank or you're trying to get something from somebody you need to be able to read their body language you have rigid rigid is when you pull your shoulders back I know we know somebody in the house that's rigid. they like this. I mean, you can't get nothing past them. You say, can I? You don't even get whatever it is out, and they're already telling you no. Okay? You can tell it from the body language. And if you really need something, if you need a favor, don't ask them. Go to someone where their shoulders are a little bit rounded. Because when the shoulders are a little bit rounded, those are the p- people that are burdened. They might say yes. Okay, they have the weight of the world on their shoulders. So you can look now. You can just be as smart. You just look around and say, "Mm -mm, sister, I'm not coming to you today. I want to go to this guy over here. You understand? So then we have needy people as well. We all know people that are needy, don't we? Now, those people have rounded shoulders and their head is forward and they walking towards you and you know they need something. And what you do, you try to look at your phone. You roll up your window. You try to walk the other way. You start rolling your eyes in the back of your head. And as soon as they open up their mouth, you're saying, what? Okay? Now you can know what these people look like when they come towards you and run. Dr. Africa's book has so many good things in there. It actually also talks about blood pressure. A lot of us have high blood pressure. A lot of us. Young and old. We have high blood pressure. How do we get the high blood pressure? Because everybody's getting on our nerves. Most of us are stressed. Got bills and we don't know how it's going to be paid or somebody asking us for some money we don't want to give them. But they close to the family. And you know when if you don't pay that bill, that whatever comes out the back of it, you're going to have to pay it anyway. So that's why you stress. Does that sound like, you know, the Africans in the house that I know? That's how you got high blood pressure. And then because you gave him the money, you start eating salt because you just mad. Want to eat them salty potato chips to work that tension out of your body. And if you like me, you like habanero sauce on everything. Everywhere you go, you pull it out your purse, you got some habanero because you're just mad. That plays into blood pressure issues. Okay? I need you to do something for me. For those of you who have your hands free, I want you to start clapping. I want to really show you what it means to have high blood pressure. Okay? And I just want you to go a little bit slower. Lub, dub, lub, dub. Just do it like that. Okay? That sounds good. Now you started eating salt, so you have to pump it hard and faster. Okay? That white woman at work told you you ain't nothing, and she's trying to take your money. Somebody just ran you off the road and you got road rage. Something that broke down in the house and you ain't got money to fix it. You don't laugh. The heart doesn't stop. This is how the heart pumps when you're sleeping. This is why you wake up feeling tired. Thank you. Now feel how your hands feel. They hot, aren't they? That's how your heart feels. You're out of breath, aren't you? You ain't even walked up no steps and you're out of breath. That's what happened to you. Waking up sleepy, I mean, waking up tired is just no no good. A lot of us get up and we still tired because that heart is working that hard when you're sleeping. You're aging twice as fast. Some of us say, you know, that you're young and you're saying, I feel like I'm twice as old because you probably are inside your body. We have to start taking control of ourselves. Okay? Nobody is going, coming up to you with a gun to your head and telling you to eat that Snickers. 
They're not coming up to you with a gun in your head giving you liquor. And nobody's giving out free weed the last time I checked. It has an effect on the body. It has an immediate effect on the body. You know how you say something? You say, I only do this sometimes. Oh, so you, you only make your heart race sometimes. Does the heart really do that? No, it doesn't. When you offend your body by what you put in it that you should not have, you are affected immediately. And you think because you're young, you can eat foolishness and, oh, it's, it's okay, I'm young, I can just burn it off. No, the body doesn't work like that. That's why you got young people with their hair falling out. You have young, young men, they're bald. How are you 16 years old and your hair's falling out? Because you, this your choice is what you're eating. And I will then, last but not least, talk about social media. You're putting your business out for everybody to talk about it. I'm not mad that you're using social media. It's how you use it. If you're marketing and you're trying to do something that is positive, then have at it. But when you're saying, you know, look at the suit I just bought. You know, you're doing selfies. This is the, the most vain generation I've ever seen. And I mean from young to old. I see old people doing selfies now. I ain't just talking about the young people. But you put your self-esteem in this computer. And you waiting for people to like you. And to call you their friend. Wondering why you have emotional issues. You should have never put it into social media. Somebody blocks you and now you can't even sleep because you're trying to figure out why you got blocked? Really? See, the tools of the enemy have been set before us. It's, us, it's up to us to understand and use wisdom to know what those tools are and to respond appropriately. You're giving these young people cell phones. You're giving them iPads at 11, at 5, and you're using it as a babysitter and wondering why they are giving you bad behavior. Shame on you. All this stuff. Now, I'm not saying that cell phones are bad. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that giving them an iPad is bad, but you need to watch what they're looking at. Because what you see is also what you eat. It has to go through a digestive process. You see something that is violent, it secretes a stress hormone inside the body. So now you have to digest that. You're trying to wonder where, where these children are, so, why they're so angry. Because it's what they're watching. It's what they're listening to. It's what you're watching. It's what you're listening to. We must, we must take full advantage of who we are as a people and stop allowing other people to use us, okay? We have to come together as a culture. We are very intelligent people, but we are being intelligent for them. We're giving our intellect to them. So all of this is holistic. You can't deal with one without dealing with the other. Okay. Cancer is a progression of a disease. You can have a mild disease, severe, chronic, fatal, degenerative cancer. It's, it's just stating a degeneration of a disease. It's not particularly a, a disease like you think. It's just a progression. We give people these social terms because they don't understand acute and chronic and the medical terms. But you can't see fatal you can't see cancer in the microscope. All we see is hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and that's how we're reading it. We're not reading that social stuff that people say, I got acute disease. That don't mean nothing to me in chemistry. Yeah. And you treat it, of course, by not eating junk, breathing properly, sitting on the toilet properly with your knees above your navel. It's a lifestyle kind of thing. But it's a money maker. It's a disease industry. It's not going away. It's too much money in it. 
Yeah. Just one last book to sign, and I'll get the next question. Hey. I don't see the question, so I don't know. Sister Green, what's your question? Anonymous person, or what? They don't have a name. What's your name? Give me your name. I guess I to... Oh, you talking about him? I can't hear this dude. Niam, Niam. Spell it. Spell it. N I O N. N I O N. You're going too fast. L I O N. That's it? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thanks. So her question was about diet and mental health, the relationship? Yes. Um, first of all, first of all, we eat emotionally anyway. Nobody eats scientifically. Everything is sold to us emotionally. You've never learned anything about nutrition from McDonald's, and they are in the nutrition business. They sell emotions, happy faces going places. So the illness is already emotional. So we have different emotions associated with different foods. As Dr. Stephen would say, salt is with anger and frustration. Sugar is with love. You follow me? Sal is with the heart. You know. So we have these different classifications of emotions based on the food that a person is eating because we put lie detectors on a person. You've heard of that? You're all not niggas, huh? Lie detector. Right. Yeah, okay. So the, we put the lie detectors on a plant, and if you have a plant and it's bonded to you, you can move to California. I can ask the plant, but she lying, and the plant will tell me the truth. Because you're bonded to the uh, plant. And all I'm saying is people bond to food. They associate macaroni and cheese with their grandmother or something. So when you ask a, a, a certified Negro to stop eating something, it's like you kill one of their relatives. That sort of thing. The... Uh, the food is given these different languages. Some people you like to use the spiritual language. Some people like, that's just a language to me. We know that everything is holistic. So everything is going to have a spiritual effect, a mental effect, a physical effect on the body. But we tend to separate spirituality and emotionality from the body. But the spirit is in the body. And the emotions is in the body. Because you're a physical thing, these things are physical. And we try to say, oh, this is spiritual. No, it was always spiritual. It's just that now you are aware of it, but it was always that way. There are three types of emotional illness. I don't want to go all fast with you. There's the emotional injury, which you may call PTSD. There's the emotional scar, and there's the emotional stunted growth. Stunted growth is um, sort of like an alcoholic that drinks till they're 30 and then they stop drinking and don't take another drink until they're 60. The minute they take that drink when they're 60, they go back to 30 because their emotional growth stopped there. Emotional scars, like you say, I did that in a relationship. I can do that anymore. It didn't work. So you lose emotional flexibility. And emotional injury, as I mentioned, is PTSD. But emotions are established before you're born. You're angry before you're born. You're happy before you're born. You cry before you're born. We think the emotions happen after you're born, but all this happened before you were born. You were already emotionally damaged by your mother and father. Then you have a family and no telling where they are because Philip is now Phyllis. You know how things are. So, so you get, you're getting all this emotional damage from your family. Then you go to school and discover that Columbus discovered Africa. You follow me? So you... When you meet somebody, you already know they're emotionally damaged. You just got to get someone whose craziness you can deal with, frankly. He's talking about he cups. They are such thing as her cups, too, you know. I'm just playing everything on men. So he cups, he's related to the nerves that run outside the body. You can sit down, bro. You're scaring me. The nerves that come from your brain and go outside your body, it's called the vagus nerve. Then there's a nerve that goes down your backbone called the central nervous system. 
the vagus nervous system is overstimulated. That's how we define what is an allergy and what is not an allergy. It's an overstimulation of the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is related to what people commonly call lymph fluid, which is related to glial cells. G-L-I-A, glial. 80% of your brain is glial cells. We only study 20% of your brain, neurons. From that study of 20% of the brain, they draw in all these conclusions. But the brain is 80% of these other cells, which we don't study because it comes under the female principle. In Greek medicine, we don't like women. I'm just telling you how it goes. Women are just an evil thing. I mean, yeah. so what I'm saying is they draw in a conclusion from 20% of the use of their brain, so how can they come up with a, a full conclusion? Nonetheless, I know that it's nerve damage. It's nerve damage related, which is probably related to poor quality sperm, which is probably related to the third trimester of, a, of his mother's pregnancy. That's just science talk. Now then, the duration of the illness is what causes the problem. A migraine headache is not a big thing. It's just the duration of the migraine can cause a stroke. So what this person is heading into is, well, mental illness for one of another word. But nonetheless, it's basically nerve damage. And anything that treats the nerve will not say nerve on the label. White people ain't going to be that precise. You just want something that says memory enhancement because the memory is the nerves and the nerves is the brain. So you want something that says memory, memory enhancement, something like that to help this person. Other than that, um, that would be the easier path for these guys. Uh, I don't want to extend it too far. I know acupuncture and all that sort of stuff would work quite well. But I don't run a full-time practice anymore. I'm 72. That stuff is over. I don't do full-time practice. I do some consultation, but I ain't going to go there. I did that for 20 years. I'm off the cross. I got new nails. So, I'm just trying to say that just get something for memory enhancement. Uh, the nerves firing off that much, they're going to burn out. You understand? It's like a muscle burns, the nerves going to burn. So, you need some fever few, which would be a herb. Fever few. Fever, like a temperature. And I know you know what a few dollars is. Few. Fever few. Yeah. Yeah, and it's something for the for the memory enhancement. That's a general thing. But I do have a nerve damage supplement over there. Yeah, I have one over there. He's having a problem with the alkaline flap of his so-called vocal cord. That's technical. But as for somebody around here to handle that sort of thing, I don't know. That's why I'm giving you, just get the nerve, uh, memory and all that fever with you. Because somebody can uh, have to be able to handle that. And I don't think they're trained to that level around here. Yes, seizures. That is nerve damage. You're asking me nerve damage diseases, which is always related to quality of the sperm. But in medicine, we would blame everything on the woman. You'll never find it. You could say, oh, my sperm was poor. It was in, you know, special ed or something. It's not going to happen. That's poor quality sperm. The leading cause of natural abortions is caused by nerve damage. So we're looking at nerve damage for that seizure disorder. Same, same thing. And they need to alkaline their diet and get off of the acid type foods, which I have that in my book. You can look up the alkaline foods and get something for nerve damage, things like that. But it, it will trigger it for sure. Your hand was up for a while there. No, you. What causes thinning of the hair in vegetarians, non-vegetarians? Well, am I correct? All I'm trying to say is vegetarians don't eat right. Their balance, their diet is not balanced. Poor quality. Vegans and vegetarians are worse because they think they're eating all vegetables. They're all right. No, they're not all right. You can't do that today, maybe in the 17th century, 16th century, but not today. They need to get some powdered protein from uh, whole, the whole. Uh, Whole Foods, excuse me. Uh, 
or, or you know, the vitamin shop or something to get a powdered protein because they, they're missing the protein. Protein is a structural material, and they're missing that one. But other than that, I'm just giving you shotgun kind of answers. Specificity is something they have to be examined and all that sort of rut. You say vegetarians has the word vegetable in it, so why should they be eating meat? They shouldn't be. You're totally correct. They just don't know any better. For some reason, they were educated that fish is a plant. You water three times a day. So they think fish is all right. I'm, they just educate it wrong. You, you know someone is doing that? Okay. Peace. Uh, he asked me about hiatal hernias in an area called arachnoid, uh, which is a old Greek term. I don't want to get into all the language mythology that he just ran down on. <laughs> he's just saying there's a cyst on the nerves. And he's saying it's a tear of the tissue, which we call a hernia. Uh, mostly involved with, um, you're looking at mostly uh, fibroid tumors and prostate, large prostate kind of things. Because that tissue is very thin and very fine and it tears very easily. Um, anything that will heal a muscle, like go to the muscle section of a vitamin shop or whole foods say what do you have for a torn muscle that's going to heal the sore and the arachnoid is a nerve so you need something for nerve damage but the easy thing would say give me something for memory I'm just trying to float you through the system but uh, that would be it and I do have something called fiber care that would shrink that and I use that for dissolving uh, cysts and tumors fibroid tumor kind of things and in large prostate I just shrink it right down and dissolve it out so that, that would be a general definition there Okay, he said, why can't you eat the highly processed burgers, vegetarian burgers, and the highly processed tofu, rather than getting a protein powder of ground up peas that are high in protein, ground up rice is high in protein, ground up, well, I'm saying get away from the highly processed stuff, because your body really can't break it down properly, because most of that was processed at a temperature around 212 degrees. So your body temperature has to come up to 212 degrees to process that. And you can't match that temperature. So we call that a trans oil and we call it trans proteins. It's, it's transition out of being natural once you put it into that temperature. So we say that's a trans protein, a trans oil. In other words, you're eating freaks and you don't want to do that. Not unless you live in Atlanta. Yes, we used to call leukemia blood cancer. So she's asking me, what can I do for cancer? Uh, there are many remedies for cancer. Generally, they will have like immune cancer, immune force on the label. When you see that word immunity, you know that's for cancer and AIDS. So you look for that kind of supplement in the health food stores. But the difficulty with treating a child is you got to go through the parents. And that's the difficulty because the parents sometimes are from stupid city. So in order to treat the parent, the child, you have to treat the parents, if you follow what I mean. So it becomes very difficult because they can have a cancerous attitude. Because cancer is just an attitude as well as a disease. You can have that kind, you can have a cancerous relationship. See, so in, in, in science, we know that a lady can't be, we can't say you are, you've been raped. Two people have been raped. You follow me? And rape is something coming out of European culture. Because if the lady had free health care, uh, guaranteed income, are you following what I'm saying? She wouldn't be prostituting. Because in our culture, prostitution is rape. Uh, are you following me here? Just because you pull out a dollar. Okay. A thought just came to my mind. So in our, in our culture... Uh, Prostitution is rape where you pull out a dollar. I mean, it's like somebody hits you in the mouth and give you a dollar. Say, well, I gave you a dollar. You can't say I hit you in the mouth. What the hell are you talking about? Rape is rape. So we have to define things correctly to get the correct solution. That's what I'm trying to say. Call it by the correct name, then you get the correct solution. But we call them things by all of these social names, and it's kind of throwing us a bit. But nonetheless, 
we are trying to recuperate from a lot of that illness that was put on us before we were born, which we call prenatal growth and development. Then the illness put on us by our crazy fam our families who are dysfunctional. <laughs> and then the illness put on us by some broken romance. Because a lot of people get all damaged from a romance. It may not be it may not be clear to you, but men don't get over broken romance as quick as ladies do. I'm just telling you, we carry that thing around. We we marry a woman that looks like the woman that looks like the woman that we broke up with. Because men don't get over that broken hearted stuff like y'all think. A lot of guys just die from a broken heart. I'm just telling you how it is. Even in jail, even in the military, they just die from a broken heart. But since we men, you know, that kind of stuff. No, no, no. no, no. So we got to call things by the correct name to get the correct solution. Um, I want to be clear on this business about uh, fibroid tumors. A woman cannot have fibroid tumors by herself. You cannot be raped by yourself. You follow me? You cannot have a, a abortion by yourself. It takes two to tango. I'm just trying to be clear here. The relationship the man is causing the fibroid as well as the lady. It's a, it's a shared thing here. But we're so used to looking at it through a one eye, the chauvinistic medicine that we are in. Because medicine is very chauvinistic. Science is very chauvinistic. You only hear men, Faraday, Einstein, science is served chauvinistic. History is chauvinistic. You're George Washington, Abraham. Everything you're in is in a chauvinistic environment. So you're not looking at both sides of this picture. That's what I'm trying to say. You cannot have abortion by yourself. <laughs> it takes two. So the problem is that we're so used to looking at one side of the picture that we don't see the whole picture. That's what I'm trying to say. If a lady gets raped, two people need therapy. Two people. What happens in nature? If I, hydrogen is different from oxygen, but when I put them together, I have a whole new chemical. Now I got H2 water. Oh, water. Totally different from hydrogen, totally different from oxygen. When you took, put two people together, you have just created a third person. The only people that know this for sure is as a child. They know how to play off of this person. To the mother and father they don't even know exists because when the mother and father join together they form one person the child knows that better than you they can make the mother's face when the father's angry with the mother and they can do the father's face when the, they just play off of y'all I mean they're good at it Trump could take a lesson from a baby they're, they're manipulative artists you know little, little crumb snatchers that's what they are kitchen pimps all of them <laughs> And then they know how to manipulate. And I'm just saying we have to be aware of this third energy. Sometimes a couple have an argument that exists by itself. They just get on the argument train. The arguments exist without them. But we don't see that because we're looking at relationship through Dr. Filthy, whatever that boy's name is. And the, yeah, you know, that, uh, whatever. So the fibroid tumors can be treated. We dissolve them. We use horsetail and shrink them. We can use tomatil. But I have a formula that for fibroid tumors that we use for enlarged prostate. Just shrink it right down. Not a problem. But the mind is that you're not feeding the sperm. I want to be clear. The man is pregnant every month. See, we're not looking at pregnancy correctly. The testicles are like the ovaries. The epididymis it's like the uterus. The epididymis is where the sperm is stored until it matures. Are you? I don't think you're following me. What I'm saying is if you take a birth control pill, it does not stop conception. It only stops birth. So that's having an abortion every month. That's what I'm saying. It says on the label, just controlling the birth of your child. That's why they call it birth control pill. It doesn't stop conception. So if you're taking the pill, you have an abortion every month. And I'm trying to be clear with this illness that's being caused because the men don't know what epididymis is. I'm, they don't know their reproductive system. Ask the guy, what, what is epididymis? Ask him. They don't know their reproductive system. Only women know that system. They know they got an ovary, uterus, and menstruate. They know the system. Don't ask no dude about no epididymis. He's happy. Who? <laughs> so I'm saying it's the miseducation. 
that's causing the major problem with the fibroid tumors and the prostate disease. Totally miseducated. Not our fault now. Don't think that we, we have to invent something new. We got enough doctors, there are more MD doctors born in Africa practicing in New York than the entire continent of Africa. I'm trying to tell you, we got healers, but they're healing white people. That's what I'm trying to tell you. We got the nurses, we got the doctors, we got the straw, we got it, the massage, we got it. But they're healing white people. Because the greatest tool of the oppressed is the mind of the oppressor. That, that's a Franz Fanon. He was a black psychiatrist. I don't know if you know the guy. Wrote a book called The Wretch of the Earth. The greatest tool of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. That's Franz Fanon. Chancellor Williams, who wrote uh, Destruction of Black Civilization, page 103 said that black people don't understand our bitter enemy is white people. He said that. I used to be around these guys, and I'd be wondering why they get so mad. Chancellor Williams, Henry Clark, I'm going through, I know I'm going through ancient history for y'all, but I'm just saying, they would get so mad and slam down their fists. I'm saying, why do they get so upset? Now I see why. I said, maybe if I tell you about cave civilization, you'll get the message here. He said, the most bitter enemy of black people is white people. Until we understand that, we will never be free. Mm-hmm. And he was talking about tinnitus. Uh, you know, something ends with ITIS in science. We call that inflammation. Gingivitis, tonsillitis, appendicitis. Right away, we know it's inflammation. So it's not anything that treats inflammation. You know, it's, it's not a problem getting a remedy. The problem is getting understanding. You follow me? Now, the ringing of the ear, I suggest they just go online and say tinnitus exercise. They got many exercises for the ringing of the ear. Not a problem there. So that, that would help with that. And the matter of soybeans, soybeans are not the problem. They have never, they have never caused any problems in China. I'm telling you, they eat heck of a lot more soy than we do. But they don't eat processed soy, soy ice cream, soy. You follow me? Soy cheese. They don't eat processed soy. They just eat regular organic soy, and they cut it up in little squares and put it in their futon soup or something. So we eat a hell of a lot of soy. The issue is that understanding, I'm going into botany, which I shouldn't really get into. Each plant has to make some element very high. So if you overeat it, it will hurt you. And when it's out of the range of your body's acceptance, that's when you call it a poison, a toxin, a free radical. Free radical. Each plant makes a poison, is what I'm saying, to protect itself from insects, animals, and from you. I'm just saying. So, so soy has a high, high element that's high in it. So big deal. So does asparagus. Asparagus is high in arsenic. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? You say, arsenic, that'll kill you. Yeah. That'll kill you outside the range your body can use it. But if you eat it in asparagus, not a problem. But you can't eat asparagus every day. It's going to be bad for you. So the asparagus plant is protecting itself from being overeaten by having a high level of arsenic. Uh, is everyone following me here? Yeah. Thank you. Now, the nerve he's talking about is a tri means three nerves. It's a trigeminal nerve is a, a large nerve. And the teeth are related to a part of your nervous system. That's in this book here. You go to the teeth and you'll see which part of your body is being affected by that. And I have each tooth and what part of your body is being affected. Look for the tooth thing. So he's saying he has nerve pain. The nerve pain is not the issue. The nerve is just warning him of a condition. Pain here is low blood sugar. Pain here is high blood sugar. Pain on the right side, the liver. Pain on the left side, pancreas. Pain in the back of your neck, potassium deficiency. I mean, each pain is related to something. I got all the pains in the book. You just go in the book, you say, oh, this pain means I'm having thyroid problems, because he is having thyroid problems. So, all I'm saying is that you can get something for pain. Uh, the strongest one would be Boswella. Boswellin. Years ago, you would call it frankincense. But the Europeans changed the name so they can, you know, that's what they do. You know, we used to be colored people. Now we African-Americans, you know, but we still treated like niggas. You know that. So I'm just saying, you get some Boswellin and get Boswellin cream. And that will take care of the pain naturally and get rid of the inflammation. 
Yeah, that's not. Painkillers. Pain pain yeah, it just kills you. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Boswell and will heal it. You've heard of it in the in the Bible. Frankincense and myrrh. They brought the frankincense for the pain and the myrrh to wash your hands because it's a disinfect. I mean, uh, Thank you. No, no, email me if you forget, man. Don't worry about a thing. You'll be aight. <laughs> Tachycardia, which means in layman's terms, what? Bradycardia and tachycardia. She's just talking to. It's a hospital called Brady here, I think. Brady. 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 Oh, whatever. <laughs> I used. To, so she's saying that the nervous system of the heart is firing off. Yeah, the nervous system of the heart. So you know it's nerve damage, yes? Yes, so you're treating nerve damage. And if you just want to calm the heart, you're going to need some hawthorn berries that's generally used for the heart. And you want a calmative. Maybe some lavender or something of that sort. Yeah, but uh, you have nerve damage. And that's the uh, nerve is going to burn out pretty soon if it keeps going like that. Don't, don't, don't worry. You'll be all right. I mean, you're just going to die. So, uh, you just... Well, I'm happy to die. I'm not upset about it at all. Really. I spend enough time around you living people. Y'all living assholes. I mean, yeah, this is just a thing. Don't, don't worry about it. I was taught to be happy about death, and that's the way I live. I accept it as part of life, and it's my new level of happiness. That's... I, I was taught that way. I'm very sorry. <laughs>